the space shuttle, the Enterprise. We think it's moving right now. We're going to go live out to uh, Dulles Airport in Virginia. You can see it's just about to take off. Um, the shuttle Enterprise is on top of that Boeing 747. It will make its way to New York City, where it will have the flyover, sort of like it did in Washington um, last week. It'll fly over landmarks like the Statue of Liberty, a few bridges, um, and then it will land at JFK Airport. And after that, it will be housed in a museum. And, you know, another chapter in NASA's history will be closed. As this thing takes off, we're going to show it to you, but we're just waiting for right now. That's oh, John Sorella, are you there? Yep, I'm here, Carol. Okay, so um, it's so cool to, I mean, it's just a spectacular sight. You know, di didn't we just do this not that long ago? <laughs> know. You know, when Discovery flew from Florida up to, uh, to Dulles, uh, you know, that, that's how this all, all shook out because Discovery ends up going to the Smithsonian uh, as the oldest vehicle to, you know, that, that NASA had, the, 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 that had flown in space, and then Enterprise going up to New York to the Sea, Air, and Space Museum. Uh, and, and, you know, as you see it, it's got that, they have that tail cone on there again, that, uh, that duck tail, I like to call it, that, that helps with the aerodynamics of of the uh, of the vehicle so but yeah you know it's going to be a great day in new york to watch this it's going to be just spectacular to see this fly over uh, and up the hudson river we understand down the hudson maybe into new jersey you know just like what happened with discovery carol we don't know for sure the exact flight path they're going to take they'll fly at about 20 24 thousand feet and um, they will be cruising at about, I'm told from the NASA folks out at the Johnson Space Center, told me this morning, they'll be cruising at about 300 knots uh, up to the New York area. It's the same flight crew that flew Discovery up to uh, Dulles and is going to be taking Enterprise to New York, except I think the weather officer, I understand the weather pilot has changed. So four of the five uh, are the same. Carol? Uh, do we have Athena Jones out there? Because she's in... Okay, Athena, you're at... I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear yep, you. I'm here. Okay, Athena Jones, um, explain to us what's happening from your vantage point. You're at Dulles. <laughs> Okay, well, we've just watched the plane uh, with the Enterprise uh, perched on top uh, move from the position where it had been parked for several days now. It's now taxiing down the runway, uh, preparing to take off. We just saw a uh, takeoff, what we believe is the NASA plane that's accompanying it, uh, just like it did with the, with the last flight, the flight of the Discovery, up here uh, from Florida. So we've seen that plane, we believe that plane take off. This one's now, it's taxiing a little bit out of our view, uh, but you've got up here dozens of people what just an hour ago may have been about 15 people is now over a hundred uh, lots of cameras TV cameras lots of, uh, of uh, people just coming out to see uh, see this this big site it's not going to be as you guys mentioned as as spectacular as it's going to be in New York uh, today but we we had our chance a couple of weeks ago here uh, but people are coming out some have come back people who saw uh, the discovery land I talked to one woman who came and saw discovery one woman from Florida who came and saw it who's back now to see the Enterprise take off. And uh, there's, there's kids of all ages, even a kid under, 11-month-old kid in a stroller. So lots of people coming out on this windy day uh, waiting for this to take off. I, I, you know, it's just cool to see any plane take off, but when it has a huge shuttle on top of it, it's even more spectacular. Jason Carroll, you're out there in New York City. Um, is New York prepared? Oh, yeah, New York is more than prepared, Carol, prepared and excited. You heard Athena talking about the wind as we were sitting in our live truck just waiting for this uh, live shot to happen here. Our truck was slowly rocking back and forth. So a lot of us had some questions as to whether or not this flight would actually happen. But we're all hearing it's a go. The music is uh, blaring there in the background. And just off camera, there are lots of people who are lining up for what is supposed to be a pretty uh, spectacular ceremony for Enterprise's arrival. Uh, hundreds of uh, folks have been invited down here, school children from New York, from Connecticut, from New Jersey, folks from NASA are going to speak. Also, uh, some folks from the uh, Intrepid Sea and Air Museum will be down here as well. As you know, that will be Enterprise's final resting place. When it eventually gets here, it'll be housed here for several months and then on june 6th there'll be another spectacular moment when enterprise is loaded up onto a barge and then it'll be sailed over to the hudson river where it'll eventually end up at the uh intrepid sea and air 
Museum. Uh, once again, some questions about the wind here, but we're told everything is a go. It will land on JFK's longest runway, which is about 14,500 feet long, I'm told. So uh, right now, everyone just waiting to see what will happen. But Carol, as you know, even if you weren't invited to this special ceremony here at JFK, a lot of folks in New York City are going to get the opportunity to see Enterprise uh, do its low flyover of the city. Uh, uh, supposed to be down the Hudson River, so folks along the Hudson River will be able to get a view. Folks downtown uh, will be able to get a view, what we call Battery Park City in that area, as the Enterprise makes a fly by the Statue of Liberty. So lots of an excitement and anticipation awaiting for the arrival. <laughs> Carol? Oh, I can't wait. I hear the music in the background there. John Zarella, explain to us yeah. who's in the cockpit of that plane, who's flying the Enterprise to New York City. Well, it's the same crew, that, again, that, uh, that flew, and I'll have to get you their names, but it's the same crew that flew, the Inter that flew Discovery up there, except, as I mentioned, just the, uh, the, the weather officer is, uh, is different. So uh, I've got that listed, then I'll bring that up uh, as they, when we, we get them in orbit there. Get them in orbit. They never flew in orbit on this vehicle. <laughs> when they actually take off. And that's a point, too. You know, this was a shuttle that could have flown in space. Uh, it was, didn't have engines initially it never flew but it was used for all of those those landing tests in the 70s to test the aerodynamics of the space shuttle concept to make sure that uh, that it could uh, in fact re-enter the earth's atmosphere that they could glide safely back to earth so that's what it was primarily used for but there was some thought of perhaps having it to be the second shuttle to fly after Columbia uh, but then in some of those last uh, free-flying tests that they did off the 747 they discovered some structural things that they decided to change in the final design of Columbia so it would have been more expensive for NASA to go back take Enterprise apart uh, than it was to just go ahead and say okay we're just going to not retrofit it we're not going to do that we're just going to you know build Columbia then Challenger and Discovery and those vehicles and thus uh, Enterprise ends up uh, as a museum piece in 1985 uh, in the Smithsonian, but not until it did all of these tests that um, without those tests, the space shuttle fleet may never have flown if they were not able to success successfully do those tests out in California. And, you know, Carol, it also spent a lot of time on the road. It was in Europe. It went to an air show in Paris. It went to Germany, to Canada, to Italy. NASA used it as really an ambassador of the space shuttle fleet, flying it all over. It did uh, the U.S. World's Fair, I believe, in, in Louisiana as well, in New Orleans uh, back in 1983. So it's had a, a very, very colorful history. It's just not a lot of people know about it because it never actually flew in space. Interesting. Um, Athena Jones, do you, why is it stopped? Do you know? Yep. Uh, we're not sure. Uh, we, 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 we don't know if it's what, it, what it could be waiting for, but we're all we're all watching it uh, to see what it makes its next move. Uh, it's interesting to hear a lot of the history that John Zarella talks about. You know, the the plane, the 747 jumbo jet that the Enterprise is mounted on top of also has, one moment, an interesting history. We're hearing a sirens. We're not sure what that's about. The, the, the plane has an interesting history. It's called a, a Shuttle Carrier Aircraft 905. That's the technical, you know, sort of fun NASA acronym for it. And it's a, a 747 that was in in commercial use. Uh, they, they bought it from American Airlines back in 1974. It looks now as though uh, this uh, this contraption may be moving a little bit. The, the shuttle on top of the plane is now inching forward, uh, continuing on uh, to prepare to take off. Uh, but just to finish up, that, that plane, that jumbo jet, was bought uh, from, from American Airlines back in 1974. And one interesting uh, fact, a little tidbit for you, is that so that, that shuttle, that Enterprise, weighs 150,000 pounds. Uh, but believe it or not, even though that shuttle is mounted on top of that gigantic 747 four-engine plane, plane it still weighs less than what you know a fully loaded uh, uh, 747 would weigh normally because this one is stripped down after the after the forward cabin there's no seats in there no galley no passengers no luggage of course so uh, it's gonna be uh, a, a lot less heavy so we're still waiting to see it take off uh, <laughs> yes, it still uh, it watching it Get, it, get in place. Okay, we have Eileen Collins on the phone, uh, an astronaut, actually the first uh, female shuttle commander. And Eileen, thank you for being with us this morning. 
Oh, good morning. Thanks. Okay, so as you're watching this image, what goes through your mind? Well, of course, I'm sad to see the shuttles go off to a museum. But in this case, uh, Enterprise has been in a museum since 1985. Of course, it's been an Air and Space Museum in Washington. So I'm excited that, you know, now we're going to have a shuttle in a different part of the country where people, you know, from around the country can see it up in New York. So I think there's some good in this, too. So space travel for NASA has, has come to a halt. Do you hope that when people go and look at these shuttles in these museums that it will create an excitement among people again for the space program? Oh, without a doubt. People are going to see how big the shuttle was. And by looking at the payload bay, we're going to see, you know, just how large the payloads were that we were able to take up into low Earth orbit. But also, looking at the shuttle, uh, we should realize that it took us to low Earth orbit, which really is only about two to 300 miles above the surface. And now the country's building a, I want to say a replacement is the best thing I can think of, but it's actually going to be more uh, versatile and able to take us farther to explore uh, beyond low Earth orbit. Our country will be able to go back to the moon, uh, onto the asteroids, and, and someday to Mars. And I think that will be very exciting to um, young people, yes, but everybody that sees the shuttles in the museums. I can remember, Eileen, when George W. Bush, President Bush, talked about going to Mars, and everybody was excited about it, and there were initial plans made, and then it sort of all came to a stop. Well, in fact, I remember that, too, and I know people were very excited about it. Uh, space flight is expensive, and it's not just executing, operating, uh, and doing the space flight, but it's developing. And that's where the big costs are. So we need to, you know, continue to do this, and NASA is doing this today. We've got a space station in low Earth orbit. The shuttle built that space station, and the people that worked in the shuttle program can be very, very proud of that space station. But it's there to help us learn how to go to Mars, how to keep people healthy in space for long periods of time. And, and that obviously is necessary if we're going to safely do uh, deep space. Um, as we're watching this, you're a pilot. So what does it feel like to be the pilot of that 747 with the shuttle on board your back? Well, these are very professional, highly trained pilots that are making this takeoff right now. And I'm sure they're very focused on their checklist, their instruments, their flying skills. They know that this is a very important mission. Um, they know they want to get that shuttle up there safely. So I would say they're, they're focused and, you know, their emotions are probably running pretty low, but <laughs> as they make sure they do this mission safely. But I think once uh, the pilots are done and they get the shuttle up there safely, they're going to be very proud of what they've done. And, and, uh, and, uh, and it's, oh, absolutely. they've trained for a long time for this, so good for them. I know they're picking up speed now, so that means takeoff's not far away. Uh, we saw a shot of the Hudson River in New York, and you could actually see white caps, which means it's quite windy there. Um, how worried is a pilot when you talk about wind over New York City? Well, you can see they have a very high profile, so any crosswind would, you know, obviously push them to the right or left and make a landing more difficult, also make an approach more difficult. But they have flight rules that would, um, you know, I would say if the winds were too high, they have the forecast, they would know that and they wouldn't go. So the flights, the winds are within limits for this flight. So I'm sure they're pretty confident not to worry. Okay. Do we have the NASA transmission? I'm, I'm asking my producer negative. Okay. Because um, we just don't have that transmission just yet, but what a beautiful sight and what a beautiful takeoff. Eileen, it looks so lumbering taking off. It didn't look like those powerful takeoffs you feel when you're inside of a plane. Well, I think now when you look at this 747 with a space shuttle on top, that is a huge flying vehicle right there. So it looks like it's going slow, but it's actually going quite fast. If you were looking at a small airplane going at that same speed, it would appear to go faster. So there's a little bit of an illusion here. I would imagine that they're um, over, they're probably approaching, if not over, about 150, 200 miles an hour at this point. Eileen, thanks. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with much more and show you some more spectacular pictures after a short break.